I mean, seriously, it's 2021 and just like three weeks ago, I found out there was actually a woman that competed in the Formula One. Mind blown. Hi guys, and welcome back to my channel. With you, Manana Manatu, on another episode of A Girl Talks Formula One. Today, I have for you a super, uber, multi mega exciting video since I am going to be talking about a woman in the Formula One. That's right, you guys, Maria de Filippis and other women who were in the Formula One. Okay, before we start, did you guys know that there was actually a woman in the Formula One? I mean, there's this whole controversy nowadays in which they go like, oh yes, women can compete in the Formula One. Oh no, they can't. And then I was like, can they though? That's why they created the W series, is it not? I mean, that was my opinion. And then I thought, you're never gonna get a woman in men's soccer, are you? You're never gonna get a woman in men's basketball. So why would you get a woman in the Formula One? Of course, I wanted this to happen. And then I started seeing that they had Maya Vogue and Jamie Chadwick and all these amazing female drivers joining the Formula One teams. Whether it's as test drivers, as reserve drivers, as junior leagues, you name it. But the point is that they are joining them. And then I thought to myself, what does this mean to women in motorsports? Do women really have a chance on the Formula One? And then, I bumped across Maria de Filippis and I thought, oh yes, yes they do. And it's only about time that we start bringing women back to the Formula One. So Maria de Filippis was such an inspiration to us all women. She was the first woman to ever race in the Formula One. She was born in 1926 and unfortunately she already passed away, but she left a legacy behind her. Her first race ever in the Formula One was in 1958 when she was only 22 years old. And it actually started quite funny because, because her getting into motorsports and racing started as a bet with her brothers because she was such a good driver. Ironic, huh? This legend was none other than Italian born in Naples, Italy. And her first ever achievement was with a Fiat 500. That's right, a Fiat 500, like Charles Leclerc's first car. This badass woman has been one of the five only women to ever race in the Formula One. She actually only made it to very few Grand Prix. And ironically, she had a little bit of trouble in the French Grand Prix in 1958 in which the race director told her that the only helmet woman should wear would be a hairdresser. Okay. Of course, this did not stop her and she went on to drive Juan Manuel Fangio's 1957 car that he used to win the world championship in the same year. She also raced in the Belgium Grand Prix, which was where she scored her highest position being number 10, followed up by the Portuguese and the Italian Grand Prix in which she could not conclude the race due to mechanical issues. She actually quit racing a year after in 1959 after one of her friends' death and realizing how so many of her friends had actually died driving in races. That was until 1979 in which she came back to racing by joining the international club of former Formula One drivers. Later on in 1997, she became the vice president and not long after, the president of honor. Now, do you guys want to find out about other women in the Formula One? Let's get to it. Right after Maria de Filippis, stopped racing, there was a 15 year gap in which no other woman raced in the Formula One. That was until another Italian driver, Lela Lombardi, came and took that place. She competed in three seasons from 1974 to 1976, achieving sixth place as her highest position in the Spanish Grand Prix. She has actually been the only woman to score points in a Formula One category. Then in her last year, in 1976, another woman came, Nina Galica, from Great Britain. She and Lombardi actually tried racing in the British Grand Prix, but none of them qualified to do it. This would have been the first race ever to have more than one woman racing in one sole Grand Prix. Unfortunately, it did not happen, so we're still waiting for our future rookies to come and do that. <laughs> No pressure, guys. Davina actually did not last long in the Formula One, but after that came the South African, Desiree Wilson. Anyway, this talented South African came to the Formula One and wait for it, 
please standing ovation. Okay, no, if I stand, actually, you guys won't be able to see me, so I think I'm gonna have to sit. But everybody back home, please stand for this amazing, magnificent, grandiose woman whom in 1980 won the British Aurora Formula One Championship. ka -ching! You go, girl. Now, the last woman to ever compete in a Formula One race was Giovanna Amati, another Italian driver, in 1992, being this the last year in which a woman ever raced for the Formula One. What do you guys think about the new female drivers joining Formula One teams? What do you guys think about women in the Formula One? I would love to know all about it. Comment down below because this is not just a man's world. And us women are here to break the stigma that not only men like cars, but women too. Do you guys see all of these new Formula One race girl drivers competing in the Formula One in the next five years? If you do, don't forget to comment down below, like or subscribe to my channel, and see you again next week on another episode of A Girl Talks Formula One.